Good morning, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's a fabulous Friday. <clears throat> good morning, Alice. It's good to see you this morning. Hi, Eileen. Good morning, Happy Joe. It's good to see you beautiful ladies on with me. We're reading May the 17th of 2019. Hi, Jackie. It's nice to have you on with us. Ooh, I love the readings. We're in some of my favorite parts of the Bible. We're read, getting to read about King David and his relationships. We're getting to read the book of John, the Psalms and the Proverbs. It just it doesn't get much better than this. I mean, we just... You know, the last 137 days, we've come through some pretty tough readings. It wasn't very easy. And I mean, these stories are kind of easy to read <clears throat> just for the sake of the story. Um, we're in the one year uh, Bible. That's the reading plan that we're using. If you read it starting in January 1, going through December 31st, you've read all the way through the Bible. So I encourage you to read the Bible to get into the word, even if it's just a little bit, these are about 10 to 20 minute readings, possibly, depending on how fast you read. Not gonna take a whole lot of time, and yet um, you know that you're on a plan that'll take you all the way through the Bible. It's pretty rewarding to get to the end of the year and realize that you've read all the way through the Bible. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, some of it's kind of hard to read, uh, but it does get easier uh, and easier and easier, and. And when you reach those times when um, uh, you, you don't feel like you have any desire to read and it's hard for you, that's the time when you want to pray and say, God, I, I'm struggling with this. I, I've gone two weeks and I, I don't give a flip if I pick up this Bible or I put it down. I mean, if that's the time to say, God, I just give myself to you. It's not about me. It's not about what I feel. It's not about what I want. Father, I know that I know that when I read this word, it's planting seeds in my heart. And I'm asking you, God, to put the desire back in my heart. And I've had to do that many, many times. Um, so anyway, we're reading 1 Samuel chapters 20 and 21. Today is the story of David and Jonathan. This is when uh, Jonathan truly figures out that his father, the king, King Saul, absolutely wants to kill Jonathan. And I mean, David, I'm sorry, it was Jonathan. Jonathan figures out that his father, King Saul, absolutely wants to kill David. David has been told and has been anointed to be the next king, but he is waiting on God to make that happen. He's not stepping out to make it happen. <clears throat> he is being loyal to Saul. He loves Saul. Um, but today, I believe today's reading is all about relationships, all about relationships. Um, you know, Jonathan had the most to lose here. He, he, he is the firstborn of King Saul. And back in those days, I don't know that I can do justice to what that meant. You know, in today's society, we've lost track of the firstborn, and our culture doesn't uh, promote that like it did back then. And I, I don't know that I could do justice to the significance of the firstborn. Now, we've been reading about it, and the more you read in the Bible, the more you start understanding the significance of the firstborn. But Jonathan was supposed to be the next king, not David, as far as just the hierarchy of the way man had put the kingdoms in place. Of course, Saul was also the very first king of Israel. God didn't want uh, the people to have a king. He wanted to be their king, but he gave in to their hard hearts and anointed Saul. God chose Saul to be their king. And then uh, Saul did not obey God. He didn't seek God. And God removed his spirit from Saul and in its place came a torment, tormenting spirit that came and went upon Saul. And he set out to kill uh, David. But Jonathan and David loved each other from the moment they met. There was a bond. It was a heart bond. Uh, I believe it was a God bond between the two of them. And whether or not it's a friendship 
or whether it's a sisterhood or a brotherhood or a mother, son, father, son, mother, daughter, father, daughter, any relationship, any, any, any relationship in our life, there are lessons in today's reading that we can all benefit from. Um, <clears throat> Jonathan devoted himself to David. It had God's blessing on it. This, this union had God's blessing on it. And Jonathan told David and David told Jonathan that they loved each other as though they loved themselves. Jonathan gave himself to David and at the expense of losing his own life. So in today's reading, we read about David telling Jonathan that your dad wants to kill me. And Jonathan said, no, why would you do that? There's no reason. No. And so he put it to the test and he's actually sitting at his father's table and David's not there. And when Saul questions it and Jonathan tells him that he's not going to be there, Saul rages and turns his rage on Jonathan and actually throws a spear at him and tries to kill him. Is what the Bible says today, tries to kill his own son. And that's when Jonathan knew that he knew that really, truly, indeed, David's life was in jeopardy. So again, <clears throat> I may talk about friendship today, but I don't want to limit today's reading to be just about friendship. Friendships are extremely important. God brings us the people he wants to surround us with. Um, he, he, God Almighty, when we give ourselves to him, see, we always have free choice. But when I, I give up that ability to choose and I say, God, I'm yours. Here I am. Here I am, Lord. I'm yours. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what I do, what I don't do. I'm just yours. And when I give up all rights to what my life is supposed to look like, he then surrounds us with the people he wants us to be surrounded with. And um, when he does that, we have a lesson in today's reading on, on how that should look. And Jonathan, at the risk of not just the kingdom, he, he didn't just give up. He wasn't just willing to give up the kingdom for David. He was willing to give up the love of his father because his father was wrong. See, there is a divine order. And, and this is a good, good, good message about divine order because the divine order is the firstborn. But in this particular case, the divine order was, was misplaced because the father chose other things besides God. And we will find ourselves at times in our marriage, there is a divine order, God first, our husband or our wife next, our children, and then all of the rest comes way below that. When there, there may come a time when your spouse makes decisions that you know in your heart are contrary to God. And we are mandated, we are mandated by God Almighty to choose God first. It doesn't mean that we divorce our spouses just because they make a bad decision or they want to lead us in a way that is not godly. That Jonathan never divorced his dad. Jonathan stayed devoted to his dad until his death, until their death. He died with his father on the battlefield. We'll read about it. But Jonathan did not honor the decisions that did not honor God. And, and all of us have to be so secure in our relationship with the Lord that when or if our spouses get off track, we stay devoted to the Lord. And I'm here to tell you that God is all about love. Look at the way David loved Saul for 13 years. 13 years, Saul attempted to kill him. Saul hated him. Saul did everything he could to trap him. And, and because he was God's anointed one, some of my most favorite words that David utters from his mouth is how dare you touch God's anointed one. Speaking of Saul, that's how we should be with our spouses. How dare you touch God's anointed one? But by the same token, we have 
both with David and with Jonathan, we see the behavior that when God's anointed one is not acting as though they're anointed or they choose to come out from under that anointing, they still remain faithful, but they remain faithful to that relationship second to their faithfulness to God. I'm, I'm telling you, every one of us are faced with this at some point in time. Some point in time, we're going to be faced with this. And, and so not only was Jonathan giving up his rights to the kingdom to become king, he was giving up his rights to be the firstborn to his father, his earthly father. He was giving up his rights <clears throat> um, to even live because he was willing to die for David. He was willing to die for David. David wasn't always correct in his responses. He didn't, he didn't always make the best decisions, but there was never a time that Jonathan wasn't willing to die for him. There was never a time that David wasn't willing to die for Saul. Man, I mean, I can't unpack all of this this morning, but what I can do and what I did this morning is I checked myself in my spirit. How am I as a friend? How, how, how is my behavior to the, to the men and women that God has put into my life to be my friend? How am I as a leader to the people he's put me in place to be a leader to? I mean, do we just let the slightest little upset upset the whole apple cart and we're just ready to toss it all in? I mean, do you know that's what people do? I mean, some of the most precious lifelong relationships are tossed to the side because somebody got their feelings hurt one day. You know, and then relationships, I mean, blood, blood relationship. Do y'all understand how important blood is to the Father? <laughs> Jesus' blood is extremely important to the Father, which is a representation to us how important blood is. Jesus himself on the cross, getting ready to give up the ghost, to give up his spirit to his father, to say it is finished and save the entire world. Look down first, just as he knew his time was near. With hands outstretched, he looked down and he said, mother, behold your son. And he's speaking to John. John, behold your mother. And he took care. He took care. And he made provision for his earthly birth mother before he saved the earth. Relationships are important to God. How are you in your, in your conversation towards somebody? How are you in your behavior towards the people you're in relationship with? <clears throat> it's, it's just, it's powerful, folks. It's, we give up some of our greatest blessings. Some of the greatest blessings, as I stopped and I reflected this morning, some of the greatest, greatest blessings I have in my entire life aren't material things. It's the people that stick closer to me than a brother. It's my brothers that stick close to me. It's my sisters that stick close to me as a sister. I, I've got so many brothers and sisters that are not blood. I, I, I mean, I'm blessed. I, I'm the richest woman on the earth. I can just tell you, I, my wealth goes far beyond anything material because I have women in my life that would take a bullet for me. I have men in my life that would have proven they'd take a bullet for me. Then I have to ask myself, am I that way in return? And would I lay down my life? Jonathan allowed his father to throw a spear at him with the intent to kill him for the sake of his relationship with David. Is that where you're at? And I, this morning I asked myself, is that where I'm at? Or is it all about the little petty things? I mean, in, in the long run, the things that you're taking issue with today, five years from now, will you even remember it? I mean, that's a good gauge for us. I mean, oftentimes I find myself maybe getting upset or, or frustrated or, on edge. And, and one of the things that helps me let go of that is I say, 
This time next year, will I even remember this situation? In five years, will I even remember this situation? And that'll give you to the degree of, of how much you should hold on to and fight for being right. I mean, being right's not all it's cracked up to be, folks. You know, God says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I desire mercy is another scripture, not justice. You know, if I'm a dead man, if I take up my cross, if I'm crucified with Christ and I'm dead, which is what the, what the baptism ceremony represents for us, I'm dead to myself because it's, it's not me who lives, but him in me that lives. If I'm a dead man, if I'm dead to myself, what difference does it make that somebody got short with me? What difference does it make that they offended me? What difference, how, I mean, to begin with, if I'm a dead man, how can they offend me? You know, when you start living this way, people can't believe it. You know, they'll misread things and they'll think you're offended when you're not offended at all. Because that's not the way the world lives. I mean, people live with their feelings on their sleeve. You, you use the wrong tone of voice with me and I'm mad. You, you, you slight me and disrespect me in some way and the relationship's over. And when those kind of things don't penetrate you, people don't know how to respond to that. They don't, they don't know how to act to that. But if we're dead men in Christ, if I take up my cross every day and follow him, you don't have the ability to offend me. And, and, and I can't tell you I'm there all the time. But oh, my Lord. 17 years later from reading this and reading the scriptures, we're coming up on a scripture here very soon in John chapter 16, verse 1, where he is, when Jesus is telling the disciples, they're going to kill me. They're going to crucify me. They're going to beat me. They're going to. And he tells them, and I command you not to be offended for my sake. And that gripped me. At that time, I was still of the mindset that if you look wrong at me, I'll be offended. If you use the wrong tone of voice with me, I'll be offended. If Tom wakes up in a gr that grumpy mood, I'm going to be offended that day. And John chapter 16, verse 1, gripped my heart. And I realized that when I walk in offense, I'm sinning against God. Because I'm letting that other person be God and not God be God in my life. If I'm a dead man, God says, I avenge your enemies. I right the wrongs in your life. I make your crooked path straight. When we submit to him, it's his will being played out in our life. It's his plan that plays out in our life. And I'm telling you what, the peace that surpasses all understanding is what reigns. You can lay your head on the pillow at night and, and, and live and rest and not have a tormented spirit like Saul had. Powerful stuff, powerful stuff. And then uh, John chapter nine is about the dead, uh, the dead man, the blind man, <laughs> the blind, blind man that he, that he healed and um, about the blind man's parents. And, you know, I, I, love, I love the scripture when it says, you know, why, why was my son born blind? Is it our fault? And for Jesus to absolve them of that and say, no, this happens so that my Father in heaven will be glorified is powerful. Powerful. We, we, take, we want to own way too much responsibility for things. There are times when we don't own enough responsibility. Um, that's one of those areas where you could say, oh, well, the Bible contradicts itself. No, both of those are true. There are times when... Um, I absolutely don't want to be accountable. It's not my fault. It's always somebody else's fault. I'm going to blame them and I won't accept responsibility. And there's other times when I'm taking on, well, uh, Montana walked in this morning. She's not in a good mood. It has to be my fault. Probably didn't have anything to do with me. I mean, we hadn't even said hello yet this morning and I'm already wondering, oh my gosh, what have I done? You know, don't own that. If the people around you are upset and they get their feelings hurt or, Whatever, if they need you, they're going to come to you and talk to you. If, if you have offended them, it's up to them to come and bring it to you and say, let's talk about this. But, but, but too often we, we dream up things and we imagine things that are not ours to own. Don't own that. Own the relationship with your heavenly father 
And when you own that and you know who you are in him and who he is in you, he writes all of this around us. He will take care of it. If indeed I've done something wrong, if I'm abiding in him, he'll correct me every single time. It's when I'm not abiding in him that I get off track. It's a fabulous Friday. I was reminded this morning, I'm the richest person on the face of the earth. I have a life full of love. And my world's not 100% perfect. I don't always make the right decisions. I don't always behave in relationships the way my father would have me behave. But his mercy surpasses any mistake I can ever make. And as this morning I read today's scriptures and I reflected on my relationships, how could this not be a fabulous morning? Wow. So have a great weekend. We'll talk again on Monday.